There's a new report out by Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government, and it's about the cost of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, I know that we weren't supposed to worry about these costs because um, an administrator in the Bush administration told the American taxpayers in a hearing before the Iraq war that the war would only cost $1.7 billion. $1.7 billion, okay, all right, great. In fact, uh, at different times, they, the administration said, no, 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 that's not even true, it'll be free. They said the Iraqi oil would pay for the war. <laughs> okay, in fact, I'll give you one more uh, statement by a Bush administration official before the war. It was from Lawrence Lindsay, he was the Bush's National Economic Council Director. He said that the war would cost 100 to 200 billion dollars. And you know what happened? The Bush people said, that was outrageous, of course it's not going to cost that much. They forced him to resign. <laughs> they basically fired him in disgrace for saying the war would cost 100 to 200 billion dollars. Now before we even get to the report on how much it's actually going to cost us, I can give you the hard numbers what it, on what it has already cost us. Now this is to be fair, Iraq and Afghanistan. Two trillion dollars. Two trillion dollars. Do you know that the debt on the interest, the interest that we pay on the debt to finance the wars, that alone has cost $260 billion. So the interest on the debt costs more than what was the most outward possible number given by the Bush administration, and that guy was fired for giving that number. Another amazing fact, do you know that 20% of the total amount added to the US national debt between 2001 and 2012 were just the cost of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So when they talk about the debt, oh, Obama with the debt, Obama, Obama, no, 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 no. Your wars, one fifth of our debt in that time period was because of those wars alone. But that's not the only cost. So the Harvard study mentioned all the other costs. They, for example, long-term medical care and disability compensation for service members, veterans, and families. I'll get into some detail on that in a second. Military replenishments and social and economic costs, right? You gotta replace the equipment that we used, and then you got, and the guys who weren't here at the time could have been contributing to the economy, but they weren't. And then you got paying off trillions of dollars in debt. That's for as far as the eye can see. You owe that money, we're gonna have to keep paying that money. Then you've got huge expenditures to make, to replace military equipment used in two wars, as I explained, and then improvements in military pay and benefits made in 2004 to counter declining recruitment rates. That also costs some money. Now when it gets to the medical treatment, you know how much uh, that has cost us? Well, first of all, it's affected 1.56 million U.S. troops. That's 56% of all Afghanistan and Iraq veterans have needed treatment when they get back home. That all costs a lot of money. In fact, so here's a stunning fact, a quarter of a million troops have suffered traumatic brain injuries over there. The rate of suicide in, among those troops has doubled. You know what it reminds me of? Unfortunately, the NFL. Now this is a far more serious, and that's why there's been so many more suicides. But you get traumatic brain injury, and that affects you in many different ways, including to far greater rates of suicide. And you thought taking a hit in the NFL was bad. Wait till you have an IED explode underneath the car you're driving, right? So there's not only the enormous human costs involved, but actual financial costs as well. The Veteran Administration's budget used to be 61.4 billion in 2001. It's now more than doubled to 140.3 billion, but that's nothing compared to the treatment that we're gonna have to give these troops for decades on end, because we have to. A lot of them are missing limbs, they've got the traumatic brain injuries. We owe it to them, they fought our wars. How much is that gonna cost us? 836 billion dollars over the coming decades. Remember, the first estimate Bush administration put out was 1.7 billion dollars for the whole war. Just to treat the veterans going forward from today, 836 billion dollars. So the final cost of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, when you take all these costs into account, four to six trillion dollars. So the next time somebody talks about the debt and the deficits, take that five trillion dollars, roll it up, and you know where to put it. If it wasn't for your stupid ass wars, and yes, Obama's responsible for the surge in Afghanistan and continuing that, and the Afghanistan, yes, might have made sense in the beginning, certainly didn't make sense 
for all of these years. We don't even know who we're fighting over there. We don't even agree with the government that's obviously corrupt and fix the elections. <laughs> but the Iraq war, 100% senseless. They didn't attack us on 9-11. But they wanted to go get that oil and they didn't get it for us and they didn't use the oil money to pay for the war. They did it to get the contracts for multinational corporations that actually run our government. The same corporations who made a killing off of this war through the defense contracts they got, the oil contracts they got, they got rich as we got poor. Conservatives don't give a damn about debt and deficit. This is what they care about. Five trillion dollars, and let alone the terrible human cost for us, the Iraqis and the Afghans.